Hi, my name is Shelly, and I'm really happy that you're joining us today. I am the manager of the Legal Services National Technology Assistance Program, and we are here today to learn a little bit more about remote access and controlling all of that. And I'm going to turn it over to Michael Hernandez. He is the ringleader of this session today, and he's going to introduce us to what we're going to hear today. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, no, you know, always a uh, busy day, um, always lot, lots of stuff to do and all the year end stuff. So definitely appreciate uh, the time. Um, I also know, um, you know, hard for people to uh, to join on time. I was uh, a minute late myself um, for, th for this call. Um, but yeah, I think a, a really good um, topic that we have today, um, you know, I think even prior to COVID, um, you know, one of the challenges um, you know we've had as a community is how how do we provide access to our organization's data uh, for volunteers and interns, right? Prior to COVID, you know, we had a lot of people coming into the office, so you know it was a lot easier. Hey, here's a desktop, here's credentials, log in. Um, but now with with the hybrid environment. Um, you've got volunteers and interns working outside of the office. Um, and, you know, how, how do you, you know, do you have equipment that you're able to provide everyone? Um, and if you, and if you don't, um, you know, how are you, you know, keeping track of that data? How are you securing that data when they're accessing, you know, email, your case management system, your files, you know, your file system, whichever, you know, you might be using, well, if it's a file server or, you know, SharePoint, OneDrive, um, things like that. And, you know, how, so how do you keep control of that data when they leave? So they, you know, provide the help, you know, the great help that that volunteers and interns, you know, do for whatever period of time. And and that, you know, it runs across the board, right? That, that could be for a couple of weeks, that could be for a couple of months, it could be for six months, it could be a year. You might have an attorney um, who, uh, you know, who's doing pro bono work that, you know, works, uh, a, you know, one case, you uh, a quarter, or, or they they take one case at a time, um, and you now they need access to the to the data um, and also save the data in the organization. So um, I I think this is a really great topic uh, for the you know for the community. I definitely appreciate you know everyone um, joining. Um, so we've we've got um, two different types of uh, solutions, which you know this is um, an informative. You know, session. You know, I think that this is great. What what LSNTAP is doing with look, this is to provide you information. It's a, you know, the takeaway is supposed to be to have you think about maybe even some of the challenges that you you didn't necessarily think you had, um, or if you did have it, and you and you you did know, here's some options that we could look into. Um, you know, so so Veeam Veeam and and to your point. You know this. They're they're on gracefully. You know, willing to share information about, um, you know, their solutions and and how they do things. Uh, again, but this is really informative um, sessions. It's just to kind of, you know, expose you to some options that are out there, um, and you know what you do with that information. You know, whether um, you have more interest in them or or looking up up other solutions. You know, completely. You know, completely up to you. Again, we we just want to help with in, informing um, you as a community as as what's out there. Um, and again, I think great. Um, you know, for LSNTAP for for doing this. Um, so um, I'm gonna assume we'll probably get uh you know some some more people on. Um, and you know we'll we'll let them in, but we're gonna get started with the presentation. And so the format will be uh so. Veen's going to go first, Dan, um, and, you know, so he's going to, you know, uh, review his solution, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and then, and then we'll have a question and answer period, you know, specifically on that solution. If, if you had questions, and then once that's over, you know, we're going to hand it over um, uh, to Joel at, at uh, tier point and do the same thing, you know, he'll review his, um, and then we'll have question and answers. Um, and then at the end, if there's still um, some time left, you know, we could just open it up to any additional um, questions. Um, so with uh, with that, um, Dan, going to hand it over.
to you, you know, do, you know, quick intro. You've got, you know, up to 15 minutes and, and before, before the question and answer period. Hey, Michael, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, I've been, been looking forward to this meeting. Uh, quick introduction about myself. Um, my name is Dan Aquafreda. I'm the senior account executive here at Venn. And on the call with me is Chris Johnson, and, and he's one of our senior product managers. And he's going to be helping us out with some technical questions if you have them, and, and you'll be walking us through a demo. And just kind of a quick background how we got here. Mike, Michael found us online for for uh, you know for a solution for kind of the issue that that he just spoke about. Um, we had some time. We we did an introduction call. He learned a little bit about us. And he thought it'd be a great opportunity to speak to some other organizations here that may be dealing with some similar problems. So I just want to say thank you to Michael to, who, who brought us in. And just a quick agenda of what I wanted to go through today. Just some introduction about Venn, who we are as an organization. I'll kind of go over kind of why Venn exists and the solution that, that we've recognized or the problem that we've recognized and, and how we're kind of overcoming that solution for our clients. And then I'll introduce uh, Chris, who will kind of walk us through a quick demo. I think that'd be a great opportunity to get a visualization about what Ben does. So Ben was created over two decades ago. And out of over 700 clients of ours, a lot of them are in highly regulatory environments. So organizations like banks, financial institutions, really any organization that has high compliance standards need to protect the data or needs to be compliant to things like PCI, HIPAA, GDPR, SOC 2. So Ben was really built for security-minded organizations looking to simplify and reduce their costs around delivering a secure workspace, but without the nightmare of having to ship computers or without something like a VDI. So the conversation we have with so many of our clients is about this employee computing model that we're discussing today. And many organizations are still in the challenging model of buying and locking down PCs and insisting that people only do work on these machines. However, you know, since the pandemic and over the terms of the last couple of years in terms of remote work, the lines between business and personal started to get blurred. And the expectation that people can have a home office, a work computer, a personal computer, and respect those boundaries really starts becoming unrealistic for both the employee as well as the organization. Not to mention that a lot of our customers are hiring people and building teams in more geographically dispersed areas than ever before. So our clients use this for many use cases, but this is really a big one in why this model is becoming increasingly more challenging. So at, at Ben, we talk a lot about BYOPC and BYOD, or bring your own device. And you know, this has been a hot topic for a lot of organizations over the last couple of years. But the thing we like to remind our clients is that BYOD doesn't have to be wholesale, right? Not everyone needs to bring their own computers. There's a lot of different options and ways this technology is being adopted really quite quickly for various types of use cases. So at Ben, we're seeing our clients leverage BYOD for independent contractors, interns, volunteers, offshore scenarios, mergers and acquisitions. And, you know, at Venn, what we're currently doing, right, we, we literally live and breathe our technology. I'm working for my BYOD device right now. Um, and in some instances, we'll actually use a stipend to pay for an employee's laptop so the organization themselves doesn't have to. But another thing to remember is that we don't need to say yes to every PC or even lock down every PC the same way. There's a lot of different ways this technology can plug in. The bottom line so you have the ability to protect your data without having that lock down a whole machine itself. So most of us here are probably familiar with, with MDM, you know, whether you know it or not. So MDM is essentially what allows you to have access to company data like email on your personal phone, right? So what MDM did was it gave us the ability to containerize the application itself on a personal device. And that's what Ben is doing today for laptops, right? So almost think of us as MDM for laptops, if you're familiar with that. Really what it's designed to do is be a secure workspace for remote work, protect the data without having to lock down the whole machine or having to push people into a virtual desktop and type environment. So the innovation here is a secure enclave that's going to go on the PC or the Mac. When you install that on a machine, it sets up the secure enclave. And that's where all the applications sit where all the work is being done inside that blue border. 
And the blue border is a visual indication around those specific windows. So if it's in blue, it's in business. Everything inside that border is going to be controlled and administered by you. So for example, what applications they can run and where your data can go. This is how you're going to be able to control for some of the compliance standards your company could be held to. So everything here regarding the business can be remotely wiped. Everything work related on the machine can be removed. There's also a network component that's important, and that's that all network traffic emanating from within the secure enclave is going to go out of secure tunnel through a gateway in an IP space that you control. Anything on the network related outside the enclave is just going to go out to the user default internet connection. So how does it work? So again, th this is not a VDI, right? We do have some experience down that path, and some of you may be familiar with this as well, but this is different. This is a local computer and locally installed applications. There's a software-based solution that's going to put a virtual wrapper around an application that's running on the personal machine itself. So the wrapper is a blue border from the user's perspective, but from the IT of the administrative perspective, it's essentially a firewall that gives you control of what can go in and out of an application. So can I copy and paste data? No. Can I take a screenshot? No. Where am I able to save that file? All that stuff becomes policy configured by you, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute when I turn it over to Chris to walk through the demo. But just to summarize our objective, here at Venn, security is our North Star, and that is what we're providing to our clients. So the company is still going to meet high compliance standards, but without the need of something like a VDI or shipping computers. You're going to be able to accomplish this now without hosting, so it's designed to be much less costly, much simpler, primarily because you don't need to add any additional infrastructure or data centers. We're using local computers and letting people work natively the way they want to work. However, we're giving you control of the applications, the data, the really entire remote session. In fact, we're not giving you control of the whole PC. We're just giving you control of the enclave. And the last thing I'll say before I turn it over to Chris, it comes in regards to deployment. And it really is quite simple. It's a single install. So the employees are going to email invite as you provision a user. They install then, and they're ready to start working in about five to six minutes. So I'll pause there for a second. I'll stop sharing my screen. I'm sure there'd be some questions uh, that we have, but Chris, I'll turn over to you first to walk through the demo, sir. Sounds good. Okay, my screen should be coming up here. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through the typical end user experience on a Windows device. This is also supported on Mac, iOS, and Android. So what you're seeing here is I have a Chrome window running inside of the Secure Enclave and logged into a SharePoint site. I have kind of your generic sales spreadsheet here, open in Excel, and a blank Word document. So the first thing that I wanna reiterate is that these applications are directly installed on the computer, right? There's, there's not a second instance, we're leveraging the applications that are already installed here. Uh, for the end user, there's really no difference between the applications that are running inside the Enclave or outside. They function exactly the same. The only thing I'll notice is that blue border surrounding them, and that's going to help me really identify the context that I'm in. This is my workspace. And you can see that any application that's brought into focus, you'll see this icon up here. We call this the badge. Really the significance for me the, as the end user is it's gonna tell me what I can and cannot do inside of the work environment. And these are highly configurable policies from the company level down to the user. And it's done through a SaaS based admin console. So there's no infrastructure in far as managing the user. So for this user, I'm pretty much locked all the way down. I can't upload anything in the browser. I'm not able to move or paste any data outside of the secure enclave. My network access is restricted and locked down and that's alluding to the private company gateway or that protected connection that Dan was talking about. Not able to print anything that I'm trying to download or save has to stay within the enclave. And I can only save to a location that an administrator would designate for me to save to. And I can only log into those accounts with an account that's authorized. And I'm not allowed to share out my screen or take any screenshots. So really, like I mentioned, working in these applications, there's really no difference. I'm in one, moving to the other, the data moves back and forth just fine. And that's really expected because all of these applications here are running inside the Enclave. Now, if I were to open up another instance, which I have over here of Excel, you'll notice this one is running outside the Enclave. It doesn't have that border. If I do a right click here and try to go paste, you'll notice that it's as if there's nothing on the clipboard for me to paste. And that's because there isn't. 
when you're working inside the enclave, we're actually running a separate instance of that clipboard so that none of that data can be exfiltrated out. But if I'm working on something outside, need to bring it inside, no problem. That works just fine. So really the general rule for me as an end user is if it's in the blue, that's where it has to stay. Now, most users, they're not trying to do anything maliciously, but they're just trying to work in different ways that they want to. So I wasn't able to copy that. I'll go ahead and try to take a screenshot here. And you'll notice when I do that, all of these windows are completely blacked out. Now, this policy here that we're looking at is the screen sharing capture, and it's very configurable, right? So we all have different personas. Some people are working with PII, and you never want them to be able to share out. Maybe you have some users that never do. You can turn this off completely. Or in this case, think of this kind of persona, right? Doing presentations. But I want to be able to explicitly only share out what it is I want to share while making sure all the other screens are protected. So I have this option here. I can go ahead and specify the reason for me doing this. And what's going to happen when I click share window is it's going to create an audit trail for the admin to be able to look at. It's going to tell me the GOIP location, the device, what I was sharing and why, and for that duration. And then when I try to take that same screenshot, you'll notice that only the application that I gave explicit permission to is now visible and the others remain blacked out. And that'll stay that way until I either come back to that badge, kind of stop sharing that screen, I close out the application completely, or I log out of that. So there's really three components here that we're going to be talking about, three pillars, if you will. One is the application protection and isolation, right? So that is how we are separating and isolating the applications from other interactions with the operating system. Now, the second component we're going to discuss is how we're protecting data, being that we're on a local device. So I have two instances here of File Explorer running side by side. The one on the right has that blue border. That's the one that's running inside of the secure enclave. What I want to draw your attention to is you'll notice this item called Vendisk on the right. So Vendisk is our encrypted disk. Think of this as a profile store and not a file system. If you look on the left there in the other file explorer that's running out, you see that that drive doesn't appear there. This drive is completely hidden and inaccessible to anything that's running outside of the enclave. So the way this works is when a user logs in, they authenticate, they pass a series of device compliance checks that you can configure, such as making sure the operating system is up to date, antivirus is up to date, so on and so forth. We grab those decryption keys and we decrypt this drive and it becomes accessible to any application that's running only inside of the enclave. You'll notice that I have OneDrive here and Google Drive, the cloud file systems running inside of the secure enclave. So what we're able to do is give the admin the ability to specify the file systems that I use, specify the account that I can use to log in with, and then we're binding those file systems, that the cache from those file systems to Vendisk to ensure that anything that gets locally cached remains on this encrypted disk. Now the cloud file systems are gonna operate exactly how you'd expect them to. Come through here and navigate. If I click on one of these files, it's gonna open the application inside of the Enclave and I'm gonna save it. It's gonna sync back in real time. The other component of Vendisk, which is really great when we're th thinking about leveraging personal devices is traditional solutions when you need to offboard a user or a device is stolen, that really the whole device has to be completely wiped. What we're able to do here as an admin is simply locate my device in the admin console, select wipe work data. It will remove everything that is stored on this disk and break any of those authentications into the file system without impacting the personal side at all. Now I mentioned that this was an encrypted profile store. So I'm gonna show you what that kind of looks like in real time. You'll see that I have two instances of Chrome here side by side. One of them, the one on the left is in the enclave, the one on the right is not. And you can see immediately it's a completely different themes, completely different set of bookmarks, even logged in with two separate accounts. So what's happening the first time that you're launching an application via our application launcher. So you can think of these icons here, not as real physical applications, but just representations of the applications that you're allowing me to run in the Enclave. When I'm clicking an app for the first time from here, we're hooking into that application down at the very base of the operating system, down at the kernel level. We're rendering that blue border, and then we're creating a brand new set of profile information for these applications on Vendisk. And that allows me to customize my work environment for how I like to work and without impacting the way I use it for personal use. And finally, the third component is how we're protecting the network. Now, out of the box, each tenant comes with its own set of static, static and dedicated IP addresses that 
are only used when inside of a secure enclave. So all the traffic that's coming out of that secure enclave is going over this encrypted connection. So think of this as any of your SaaS applications, Salesforce or something like that. Now on the left, we'll go ahead and log in and you can see my IP address here. And that's one of those IP addresses of the private company gateway. So just think of this as kind of the split tunnel VPN. Now I'm gonna to try to go to that same website outside of the enclave on the right. And you'll see, I immediately get that access denied message. And my IP address is different because that's using my local connection. So essentially what you're doing here is you're encrypting and tunneling all the traffic that's emanating out of a secure enclave. You're respecting my user privacy, right? If I'm in my personal browser, none of that's being tracked and watched. And then you're able to leverage conditional access rules to prevent access to company resources unless they're coming from these IP addresses. So what essentially you're doing is funneling all users into Ven in order to access work. Okay. So I'm going to stop there. That is our general kind of overview of the solution. And we'll pause and see if there's any questions. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Chris. That, that was excellent. Really appreciate it. Um, I'd, I'd like to open it up. If anyone has any questions, please, you know, please don't be shy. Um, if you could unmute yourself or um, you know, feel free to, to chat any, any questions that you might have. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions that hopefully will uh, provoke some some thought. Um, great. Thank thank you, Shelley, for that. Um, so on the IT side, right, a couple of um, uh, things that you think about when someone's using their personal device, right? So, Chris, you mentioned one. Um, you know, making sure that the user has endpoint security um, installed. Let let's say the the I guess is there. Is there, with your solution, is that a, an absolute requirement um, or the way it's set up? Yeah, it's best practice to have endpoint security set up, but if the user doesn't or it, they don't keep it updated, the way that it's set up, um, it's not, um, you know, or, or it's not a huge risk. Yeah, Look, so no one can say, right, it, it's hard to say there's never a risk, right? right. But, you know, so, but, uh, you know is, is it a huge risk? Um, risk mm -hmm. if the user um, doesn't have, you know, something that's updated. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a good point, Michael. There is no silver bullet, right? We're, what we're doing is reducing that attack surface tremendously. And you can implement a set of device compliance checks to prevent the user from, from logging in if they don't meet them. And they're basic hygiene things, right? It's the, like I said, the antivirus installed. Is it running? Has it been updated? Is your operating system patched? Is your AV screaming, hey, I'm, uh, you know, there's an infection there? But if, if that was something that we didn't want to enforce on the users, yes, this, this solution has a, a number of ways that it's protecting, right? So for one, that disk is a read-only disk from the outside perspective. It's impossible for anything to write to that disk. We're protecting against common attacks like memory injection. So we're monitoring what's happening with that application because we're so far in the operating system. We're able to monitor all that and shut down anything if somebody's trying to attack the applications that way. So in effect, if that computer gets ransomware, I mean, that's that's terrible for that user, but it's not going to impact work or work data in that in that secure enclave. Great. Uh, yeah, just so, one other yeah. point on that. Yeah, again. The, even the keylogger kind of scenario, if somebody were to download, get a keylogger on their machine, okay, I, I mean, it's terrible. It's gonna you know, take their, their banking information but they're not able to record the keystrokes of any of the inputs, the applications that are inside of the enclave. Yeah, no, great point. So you stole my question, right? Because on the IT side, that's that's a concern, right? Someone with a personal computer, you it, whatever, something malicious could have already happened, right? And could already be on there. And the common, you know, scenario is a keylogger that's already on there. So now, you know, you've got a, a computer that's compromised with the keylogger logging into our network, and now, um, you know, keylogging all their, you know, everything, what they're typing, client information, which could include their address, social security number, you know, if they're doing like intake or something like that, um, you know, their passwords. Um, so with your solution, um, if that computer is already compromised with the keylogger, um, it's it's not um, it's not a concern with your solution. Correct. 
great. Okay, a any other um, questions? Hopefully, you know, my, my few questions um, made you think about some, some things on, on your end. Again, you could use the chat if that works better for you. I'll just throw out a couple of little tidbits until we see any of the, the uh, chats coming in. So one of the things to consider too is that we do have some things out of the box, right? So if you're not, if you don't have an identity provider, we can provide that for you. We have our own built-in identity uh, management system. Same thing with that private company gateway. So that's there out of the box. Same with, uh, we have a proprietary file system. Now we built this so it's extremely flexible. We know most people have best in breed. So you can actually integrate with Okta, Azure, another uh, third-party IDP. You can leverage a different file system. You can even turn off that private company gateway and insert your VPN solution in there, right? So you have a lot of flexibility depending on how the environments are already set up. Great, great. Chris, Dan, thank you so much. This was this was great. Um, I know, you know, so, look, you know, uh, some of these provoke um, thought after, uh, you know, the webinar, um, you know, on your way home, you're like, oh, I, you know, I, I should have thought of, of asking this, right? It's just, it's just kind of the, the way it is. You know, we've got a great community um, and a community of people that um, wear multiple hats. Um, you know, some have an, in, you know, in-house IT department, some have an outsource, um, some have an attorney that's, that's the IT department. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we help with, um, you know, all different uh, scenarios and, and, you know, the people on the call could, you know, could be one of those scenarios and, and wearing that hat. Um, so uh, I, I think this was great. Um, thank you so much. Definitely appreciate you being on. Um, and, you know, as, uh, as Shelly um, chatted, you know, we, this is recorded, this will be put on their YouTube channel. So, you know, they've, they've got hundreds of organizations, um, a part of LSN tap. Um, so, you know, those that aren't able to join, um, but, but interested, they, they definitely have access to view this um, at a, at a later time. So again, thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the opportunity, Michael. We really appreciate it. And if any, Questions do come up on the drive home, like Michael said, or if there's someone from your team maybe sees a recording, uh, reach out to Michael, and uh, I'm sure you could communicate the question to us, and we'd love to get it answered for you. But thank you for the opportunity uh, to Michael and to everyone on the call. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. I'm just... Uh... Yep. Great. Um, thank you for that, Shelly. Um Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Joel at at, at Tierpoint um, again. Um, you know, providing another solution. Um, you know, addressing an issue. Right? How do you control your data um, when when it's it, they're not using one of your um, devices? I mean, this is um, this is not a a problem that is going to go away. Um, you know, I think any anytime soon. Um, especially with our community, with the need, um, uh, you know, for volunteers and interns, um, and and look, quite frankly, we have to worry about it with staff as well, too, right? Especially with the hybrid. Um, if you're in the office and your computer breaks down, chances are, you know, you have another desktop in the office or another laptop that you could hand them. Uh, but now, when you have staff at home, they have an issue with their work assigned computer. Are they going to come to the office and get that fixed so they can continue to work or or do, you know if you have the option okay well while we get your computer you know straightened out you know just you know, if you have your own personal computer hey you know here's here's how you access all of your resources using your own personal computer so though i've i've kind of focused a little bit more um talking about volunteers and interns this this definitely you know helps address um you know, with with uh, with staff um, as as well. Um, so, okay, enough of me rambling. Uh, Joel, uh, thank you so much for for joining. Um, you know, thanks in advance for your presentation. You know, same scenario. You've got you know fifteen minutes um, to go through um, you know your spiel, and then you know we'll we'll leave it uh, for some some questions after.
Joe, if you are talking, you might. Oh, be... yeah. There we go. Oh, can you hear great. me better? Can you hear me now? Yep, I can. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So let me jump into it. Um, so, yeah, Joel Dupree, Senior Director of Channels with Tierpoint. Uh, Michael, thanks for inviting us to, uh, to present. And um, we are going to, we, we have a little bit of a different approach, right? And so I'm going to get into, uh, from an agenda standpoint, who Tierpoint is. Um, we'll give you a high level overview of VDI and how that works and how we're accomplishing that. Um, may, we, we talked about this too, Michael, Manage 0365 fits a little bit of that. So that's another kind of angle and part of the story, including security around email. And then a general security uh, conversation as well. And a product we call Clean IP that we use to help manage, you know, remote and multi-site kind of situations. So those are kind of the talking points that we'll, uh, we'll chat through. Um, and again, I guess we'll have questions at the end, but if anything comes up or you guys have any questions, please... Uh, please jump in. So to your point, um, again, we're a little bit different, right? So we're a very large data center company. We own 45 data centers across the country. I think we're, we would probably be considered these days the leader when it comes to, you know, doing managed clouds, doing, you know, whether it's managing your AWS environment, your Azure environment, we build out, you know, private clouds, we do VDI. And we do a lot of this through our own data centers that we own and operate. So we're a little unique in the fact that we own and operate a ton of data centers, but then we also have this super significant managed service portfolio. So we offer a ton of services out of the data centers, not just like your traditional colo and, and you know, kind of, kind of providing space. We do a lot of services and that's what kind of brings that story together. Um, you know, we're about a thousand employees, you know, 5,000 customers, pretty substantial organization these days. There was a point about eight, nine years ago, we went through a, a big acquisition spree and bought up some of the leading data center companies around the country. And, um, you know, they were one of the larger ones out there. So, you know, there's some unique benefits to um, having a company that, that does all these managed services, but actually owns and operates the data centers as well. Gives you kind of that next level of security uh, from an operation standpoint. So um, manage virtual desktop, there's, Traditionally, we've done this in a dedicated model, right? So when I say dedicated, like a private model where we partnered with a company called Nutanix and we did dedicated virtual desktops to our customers, right? So that means you had your own private dedicated environment, which we still can do. We um, have recently started working at offering some VDI stuff through uh, the public cloud through Azure specifically. So that can bring costs down and, and, and allow us to do it in a more kind of scalable model and, you know, offer it, in, you know, a more kind of competitive pricing standpoint. So there's a couple different ways to kind of accomplish this. You know, for us, virtual desktop, you know, what it means is you get to, you know, bring your own device your computer, right, your applications, your files, all of that stuff is in a secure data center elsewhere, right? So you're kind of locking it all down and you don't have all the risk and exposure of having PCs out there, you know, files and all sorts of stuff that you kind of have no control over. So again, compared to the other solution, this is a little bit more of tackling your entire IT strategy, not just a single kind of solution that, to manage that. Um, you know, we empower employees to bring, you know, their own device, you know, embrace a more kind of mobile work style, you know, and it reduces a ton of risk when, when kind of rolling out a virtual desktop model. Um, virtual desktop also, you know, from, from our standpoint, we're able to design this because you have to think, I have to have access to all of my files, all the different applications. So our experts design, build, you know, understand your existing environment, your existing IT strategy, where things are. Most companies are operating in kind of a hybrid model, right? So you have some applications that are maybe in the cloud. You have some stuff that's on-prem, uh, you know, stuff's in a lot of different places. Again, a lot of where our value comes in is being able to understand that. And, and build out a strategy to kind of take you from where you are to where you want to get to that's often very hybrid uh, and encompasses, you know, some of the things you may already have in place today. Um, client focus. So, you know, our VDI offering 24 seven skilled technologists, right? So part of what we're offering here includes things like help desk. So you have managed help desk that can be layered into the virtual desktop offering. Um, which, you know, is a whole nother set of issues that you may have. So you have somebody to call in, you have resources and support there. We do trending analysis and recommendations for optimization, um, you know, dependable SLAs, 
You have access to uh, our team through a, a web-based portal and also phone, so you can kind of manage tickets and your end users can go directly to us so you're not having to manage these virtual desktops, you know, an ongoing help desk support. Um, so a lot of cool stuff there, you know, incident change request reports, things like that. So very client focused. Um, again, the help desk layering into the virtual desktop really adds a lot of value for, uh, for our clients. Uh, security first, right? So a holistic approach. I mean, everything's built in and built on. So I'll, I'll get in a little bit around clean IP and some of the next gen security offerings that we have as well. Uh, that you can kind of layer into your VDI uh, and O365. We also have a thing called Secure Workforce that I'm going to hit with O365. But uh, you know, that's that's kind of the the gist of, of of doing the virtual desktop, right? I mean, it's it's part of your strategy. Again, we can do it in a very hybrid manner, and we can kind of understand where you are, where where your goals are, and help you help you get there. Um, I'm going to jump into O365 now. Any questions, Michael? Anything you'd want to hit on on VDI? Uh, I'll, I'll save it for the, the question and answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Let's kind of fly through. Okay, and I'm doing a cam time, right? Yep. Yep. So O365 is the other is the other kind of component, right? So you think of your virtual desktop that links in with a bunch of your other applications. We also do manage Office 365. Um, and that includes delivering it in a managed model for you to consume. Um, we also offer secure workforce. So that's basically managing all the security around your O365. So a lot of times when you buy O365, it comes with some security package stuff, but you have to manage and set all of that up. So we configure the best security policies and maximize, maximize um, defenses against cyber threats and data loss around your O365. We also offer help desk around the O365. So again, if you don't want to be managing, you know, support tickets around, just like with VDF, you don't want to be managing those support tickets. We have 24-7 US-based support team to help you manage uh, tickets with O365 as well. You know, we can actually do all of the help desk around all this. Um, and then, uh, you know, we basically think about this way, we basically have a different route in the Microsoft. So if we got to escalate things, a lot of these things we can handle ourselves. Right, we've been through them, and then if we need to escalate to Microsoft, we have Premier support and can get oftentimes you know better access and quicker access to resolve problems. So you know, just kind of get kind of that Premier access through us and get it delivered again in a in a kind of managed consumption model. Uh, minimize licensing, right? So we can move your existing licensing over, um, clean all of that up, simplify migration and administration. So. Um, you know, setting everything up, delivering it, you know, all of those things we can take off your plate and, and provide you guys. Um, and then professional services, we can extend everything for professional services. And this is across the board, right? We talked about this with VDI, you know, if you have servers you want to move to the cloud, all of this gets tied together through professional services. And so again, you know, we can help you migrate, we can set environments up, we can do assessments, you know, manage migrations, you know, whether the assessments are around security or infrastructure, we do all of that. Um, so the third component is manage, we call it clean IP, but it's basically next gen firewall. So when you're kind of tying all this together, right, you're moving this infrastructure to the cloud, you know, the key then is, okay, now I need to manage security, you know, in terms of accessing the cloud, what's happening on-prem. We, we do next-gen firewalls where we can manage a lot of this stuff through our managed SIM and SOC, or so basically our managed uh, security operation centers to do all sorts of different things around managing uh, your security when accessing applications in the data center and, and off-prem, and especially in a hybrid environment where stuff's going back and forth and things are kind of all over the place, which is very common these days. Um, we have a, you know, a hybrid kind of next gen firewall capabilities that we can offer through clean IP. And, um, you know, again, no matter how sophisticated the environment, we can cover lots of different things, whether it's, you know, NAT stuff, you know, managing the VPNs, um, you know, deep packet inspections, um, you know, intrusion prevention, intrusion detection, um, DDoS mitigation, web content filtering, you know, full stack visibility, no matter where all the applications are, uh, identity user awareness, application awareness, granular control, um, you know, antivirus management, 
you know, device availability, monitoring and alerting, leveraging uh, external intelligence sources, right? So there's a lot of different things we can do to manage your overall security stance in these kind of hybrid environments through, uh, through clean IP next gen firewall offering. So that's kind of, um, you know, DDoS I mentioned in, in web application firewalls we do as well. That kind of rounds out, um, uh, you know, the three kind of things I wanted to focus on. Again, we're a leader in, you know, managed services across the board within our own data centers. Um, so we can do a lot, you know, in terms of just building out and, and you know, kind of evolving, um, you know, your entire IT strategy. But these three things, right, managing the security, doing the virtual desktop, doing manage O365, um, I think really enable you to have a, uh, a strong kind of strategy around this ever-changing, you know, workforce where you have a lot of people that are hybrid and, you know, remote or coming into the office sometimes and, you know, bringing their own devices. I mean, this is just a, that, that's something we can help design an entire strategy around. So, um, yeah, I think that kind of wraps it up. Thank you, Joel. Really uh, appreciate that. Um, so um, for, for those who have, um, don't have VDI um, experience. So um, could you talk a little bit about, um, so, you know, uh, someone's working off their personal computer and you talk a little bit about how um, they would be working. Um, you know, is it a, a, a client on their uh, desktop that they're opening up? Are they opening up a web browser? Yeah. You talk a little bit about- Yeah, what yeah, cl yeah, yeah, you're experience. opening up a client on your, yeah, you're opening up a client on your desktop. Um, and again, there's two ways we're doing it, right? So we can do it in a dedicated private deployment, right? So we have a, a offering called Nutanix Frame. And that's basically, we go in, let's say you have 150 uh, PCs, right? So we would go in and build out a dedicated, essentially private VDI cloud for 150 users. It can scale, but it's dedicated, right? So you might have a little bit of buffer room, you gotta add to it. Um, or we could do it in a public cloud, like in an Azure, where it's very on demand. But yeah, either way, you're opening a client and everything, you know, again, if it's in a dedicated model, everything is happening in that private cloud that we built inside of one of our data centers, right? So the security is getting managed there the, you know, the access to the data center, all of that stuff's in our data center. And then if we do it in Azure, that's in Microsoft cloud. Um, but yeah, both are through, both ways you do it. You just open up an agent and you can provide that to a new user. They can open it up on their PC and, you know, the inner, you know, that's kind of crazy because you'll get like, let's say you're, as long as you get connection to the, the cloud, right, to the, to the VDI, then when you're on the VDI, your bandwidth, all of that stuff is happening out of the data center. So you know so you that, get speed so that, tests and, yeah, you so might have ten a, megs, and then you're getting then you're getting you know hundred megs because that's what you have out of the data center. Right. So th so that's a great point. Um. Because so one of the challenges with hybrid work, right, is we have um you know people working in areas where um internet is not great. Um. You know it's it's yep. a rural area. Um. So what you're saying is as long as they can make that connection to yep, the to get the, to client the environment. Loaded. Now that environment's going to take over, and the speed and the performance are based off of what you're you're supplying yep. versus what they have at home. Yep. Yeah. And so the bandwidth, uh, you know, they can have a you can I mean you just you can get these almost you know like very base kind of terminals that you know don't have a lot of compute, don't have a lot of capacity because all of that's happening on the uh, you know again in the data center right in the cloud right whether that's in a public cloud or in our dedicated private cloud offering. Great. And I appreciate you bringing up the support um, information because um, with some organizations um, sometimes make, make decisions to not go a certain route because they don't have the internal IT support um, to be able to support a solution. Um, so yep. when, when support is available, um, you know, to, to you know, help with, um, you know, not just the implementation and walk away but the ongoing support, um, you know, that that makes a uh, you know and any solution more more attractive. Again, especially for organizations where, you know, they have very limited um, IT staff or 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 no real IT staff, right? It's it's, it's an attorney who's wearing an IT hat um, for them. So that uh, you know that that you know uh, ongoing support 
um, is definitely a, a good option. Um, so I, I did want to open it up um, in case, you know, there's anyone has any questions. Again, um, you know, you can mute, unmute, you know, mute you, unmute yourself, um, chat in the, in the chat box if there's any questions that you have for Joel. Joel, de definitely, uh, you know, appreciate that, that presentation, the overview, and including some of the other, you know, security that ties into remote work um, that, you know, we have to sort of factor in as well. Okay. While we're um, waiting for no, yeah, I was just gonna say, while we're waiting for questions from the audience, um, I would like to know. Obviously, a lot of our community is in the the um, legal aid space and in the nonprofit arena. So I wanted to um, hear, you know, your company's experiences in working with those um, type of clients. So open it up to both companies. Uh, so, Joel, um, if you want, since you were just presenting, yeah, sure. if you want to go first, and then I'll, I'll let um, you know Dan go after you. Yeah, specifically with the legal. I got that right, right? I mean, because it's like legal, legal nonprofit. Form. Correct. I, 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 yeah, legal nonprofit. Yep, yep. Um, I heard nonprofit. I'm like, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we do. I mean, legal has been a big vertical for us. We have law firms and legal organizations of all sizes uh, as clients. I mean, our, you know, we're a I, I we, we we get more focused on verticals, but what we do, um, it's so you know it's just solving IT challenges right across the board. So it, it makes I mean whether it's state and local or finance or healthcare or legal, we have tons and tons of customers across the board. But definitely there's a you know we have a strong you know legal is a big vertical for us. We work with lots of different legal organizations and have tons and tons of experience there. Th thank you, Joel. Uh, Dan. Or, or Chris? <laughs> or, um, you know, we're the same, right? We, we're, in a, we're pretty much vertical agnostic, right? We, we work with kind of all shapes and sizes of, of organizations and um, we work with a lot of legal companies, a lot of smaller ones as well, right? Um, and, and specifically when it comes to organizations that are nonprofit, whether they're legal, financial, where, wherever it may be, healthcare. Um, one one thing I think we do really well as well as from a support standpoint, especially with some smaller organizations, is being able to provide that additional support, um, the, you know, training, onboarding, and you know we're we're with you twenty four seven from the first day you start with us and 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 create yeah, that contract with us. So um, I think we're very well positioned for those nonprofit organizations as well. Um, really specifically because how we kind of work with the contractors, the interns, the volunteers, and where there's a lot of people kind of coming in and out of the organization, you know, sometimes it doesn't make sense to have that extra hardware on board or kind of pigeonhole yourselves to just hiring in one specific location. So I do think we really help out with kind of increasing the the, the breadth of, of how, who you're able to hire, where you're able to hire them, and be able to deliver your assets securely and be confident that your data will be protected. Right. Th thank you, Dan. And actually, um, you know, again, just to help um, the audience with, with with thinking some things through, um, Dan, you just said something that that triggered the thought, right? Um, you know, they're contractors in addition, right? That we work with that, you know, they might just be coming in on a specific, you know, short-term project. It could be a long-term project. So they're going to need access, to, you know, depending upon what the project is, your data as well. Um, so if you've got a solution in place, right, they they fall under the same category, right? They're, they we come in, um, you know, handle the project, complete it, and you still have access to all of your data. It's not sitting anywhere else um, when you know when they when they leave. Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of times where you know contractors get a pass, right, and they're like, okay, well, you know, we we've got an NDA with them and and different things and. Yeah, they they could um, you know have all the security in place, but if you've got the the data locked down, it's it's just not something you even need to uh, to worry about. Um, so thanks for for bringing up the contractors because that it's it's another you know area where it's it, you have to think about you know what what's happening with that data. Uh, so we've got uh, Cindy um, question: Is there a, a mobile app for both of these solutions? Um, uh, so I'll, I'll um, Dan, since you just um, spoke, I'll just kick it back to you. 
Um, does your solution also work with uh, with with mobile app? You know, mobile applications. Yes, it does. Yeah, we work with Apple, uh, iOS, Android, um, and and we we sometimes we even have the ability to use that part of your two factor authentication to get into Venn's first space. So, great. Yes. Great. Thank you, and Cindy. Great, great question, uh, Joel. Um, with your with your solution, um, you know, are you also handling the, um, mobile? You could do it through a browser with a private cloud. Um, I don't with our new stuff through the public cloud through the Azure. Um, I, I'm not positive yet. It's new. If if we'd have a if we'd have an actual app that you can download, but you can, gotcha. you can access to a browser too, right? If you want to get yep. on a virtual desktop. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, look, it just emphasizes, um, you know, there, there's so much that needs to be covered, right? You could access data from computers, from tablets, from smartphones. Now you've got, you know, smart TVs where you know you could be using that as well. Um, I mean, it, there's really just so much um, out there where you could be, you know, accessing um, data. So, um, you know, it is it, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of ground to to cover. Uh, Thank you, Cindy. That was a, a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. We've got we've got a few more minutes. Um, I'm sure there's a few more questions out there. Don't be shy. Again, you could you could chat it as as well. Um, you know, this is uh this is. I'll say this has been um, a concern, you know, as, as long as we've been using uh, computers, right? You know, if, if someone's not working in the office, but they need access, right? How do we do that securely? Um, so a lot of what's been covered today or, you know, give you options to to help with that. Um, with that, and and again, this is this is not something that's new, and it's not something that's gonna go, that's gonna go away. Um, you know, and I I uh, I think you know, especially the move to mobile has increased you know the 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 cost of equipment. Um, you know, I mean, desktops we were you know able to get for you know a certain price, and and now with the move to mobile. You know, having laptops, and then do you do docking stations, and you know now multiple monitors. I mean, you know the costs um keep going up and up. So when you know someone needs the ability to work outside of the office, um, you know how how are you how are you doing that? Um, you know, and so these are these are some ways uh, to allow you to to do that. Um, and you know, uh, you might end up being you know offsetting you know some or all of that cost. Um, if you don't have to provide, um, you know, equipment for for someone that's you know has to work sort of outside of the office or working with a with a personal device, and I think um, I, I apologize. One of you mentioned um, about you know sometimes you provide a stipend or something for uh, you know for a device. So you know you you onboard a new uh, you know staff person or a volunteer and. And um, you know you're providing you know potentially a, a stipend to help you know cover that, which you know is typically going to be less than what you you'd end up paying um, to provide that that person a, a computer. I know that that's a great point. And one other thing I'll I'll kind of piggyback on top of something you just mentioned about cost of computers, especially for short term employees. You know, one thing that that we do with our clients all the time is develop. In, in ROI, right, and and what that looks like, and especially for nonprofits, right, that sometimes have, have limited capital. When we're able to kind of show the difference of, uh, you know, our solution compared to having to buy, ship, sometimes the computer cannot get returned, it, it makes a lot of sense for our, our organizations and um, saves them, you know, pretty significant amount of money uh, over the course of of, of the year. Um, and anyone that that's interested in kind of learning more about that. I'm going to show you what that would look like as well. Since the times are offline, but that's a great point that, that you just made, Michael. I just want to piggyback off that a little bit. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, I think just you know another added benefit of of being able to now kind of leverage BYOD and some of the things that we've encountered ourselves. I remember one of the very first uh, users who got on the system was so excited about it because she was a gamer. She built her machine a certain way. It was very much spec'd out. 
And she wasn't relegated to company issued computers, which, you know, let's be honest, we can't buy sometimes the most top of the line, the best solution out there. So it gives some flexibility with within the workforce. If you're bringing on contractors that have spent a lot of time and money building up their own machine, they can leverage this in a way that's it's respecting their privacy and ensuring the data is secured while they're working on their device. Uh, so a uh, recommendation from uh, Shelly, um, you know, so any last, um, you know, thoughts on, you know, uh, what, what should be considered um, on this issue? I mean, you know, um, it's in the chat as well. Again, if, if you'd like to, to chat, um, any thoughts there, um, that would be, that would be helpful. Okay, we, we we have a quiet crowd today, which is fine. Um, you know, look, it 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 um that happens, but I you know I definitely hope um with the few minutes that we have left, you know that um you know, you you come away with uh some good information to you know think about, take back to your team, take back to your organization, take back to management. Um, I I know this is a conversation that. Um, I, some of you or a lot of you have had when having to do, you know, cyber insurance or, you know, um, reading through what funders are requesting, you know, um, you know, in terms of what security you have to have in place, um, that that's changed, right? For over the years, it's it's gone from this is what you know we recommend to now funders saying, yeah, this is the minimum requirement to what you need to have in place. Um, and that's just that list is going to continue to grow. This is not to to scare anyone or anything like that. Um, but you know, um, se security uh, you know is is a big factor in in keeping you know our client data secure. Um, so this is really not something that's going to go away. Um, you know, we've got a budget for it. I, I think funders have been uh, more flexible with with um, helping to cover. Uh, some of this, which in the past, um, some of them, you know, have, have not. Um, so, you know, a lot of the funders are also recognizing the need for, you know, to budget for security. And, you know, these are, you know, what we've discussed today are some good options to think about and, and you know, bring back to your teams. Shelly, any, any last words? Thank you so much for for, for hosting this. Well, I want to thank our guests, Joel, Chris, and Dan, and um, their companies, Vin and Tierpoint, for joining us today. I want to make sure that we get all of those companies on in our tech stack database so that the community can use that when they're starting to shop for different services. So I put it in the chat, but we'll also send it up in a follow, it, follow on email so that you can make sure that the information that we have in the database matches what you want to present. And um, thank you for all of our attendees that came out today. I hope that it was helpful. And of course, you can always view all the past webinars on our YouTube channel. And thanks you once again. And I'm going to let you get back to your afternoon. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.